Which foods taste better when they are a little burnt? Fried potatoes. Hash browns with a little extra crisp. MMM. Yes please. The hallmark of a good diner is when you order hash browns well done, and they actually cook it well done. I read this as dinner, and for a moment you were my hero. Nothing wrong with hash browns well done for dinner, or for fourth meal. Roasted Brussels sprouts. Don't knock it till you've tried it, they're soft on the inside. Most roasted vegetables for that matter. Slightly burnt roasted broccoli is the best. Yep. Gotta singe that asparagus. Plantains. Those little burnt crispy pieces you get sometimes are the best thing ever. Also onions that have been roasted with a turkey or chicken, or whatever. You get the sweet caramelized onion and a little burned, char piece with the onion. I want to top everything with those. Every roast I make I lay in a bed of thickly sliced onions and those are the best onions ever. Moist and charred at bits. So good. Is it hard to cook while lying in a bed of onions? The melted Gruyere cheese melted under the broiler on a crouton atop a crock of French onion soup. Are you the rat from Ratatouille? Ah yes. Remy. Hot dogs. Sausages in general. Just delightful with a bit of char. Some can even be better when a little overcooked and crumbly. Black and blue brats. Though there is a lot by butcher. I was friends with a guy from Germany, and when we'd go camping, he'd always char the shit out of his sausage saying in his thick accent, you have to make it nasty. I can only hear it in a sexual way like the mustache ride guy from Super Troopers. Zoo have to make it nasty. Yep, I heard that. When cooking rice on the stove, the rice at the bottom of the pot is usually a little more cooked than the rice on top. If I'm careless, that rice can end up being burnt. On the other hand, when rice is only slightly burnt such that it turns into a nutty brown color, it becomes fantastic. Lasagna corners. I love alternating between bites of the crispy burned edges and the soft gooey middle. Neapolitan pizza. We have an incredible Neapolitan pizza place in town and I always laugh at the one star reviews talking about burnt spots. The chef must want to pull his hair out. That's the point of a Neapolitan. Drizzle some ivu on that bad boy and wow chef's kiss. Cheese. Grilled con. Hot dog. Grilled cheese. Hot con. Dog. Creme brulee. Its literal translation is burnt cream. My hash one answer too. Grilled marshmallows with that crispy black shell. Don't know why, but I love it. And then take that black shell off and put in on a graham cracker. Roll the naked marshmallow in some mini M&Ms. Put M&M mallow on shell and top with another graham cracker. Delicious. Why have I never heard this in my 30 plus years on the planet? It's like when I first saw my husband eat Oreos and milk with a fork. A fork. I use a spoon. But only with the crumbled bits at the bottom of the cookie jar. He stabs the fork through the cream and dunks the whole thing in the milk. It's life changing. Then you leave it in the glass too long and it's floating in the milk. The little burnt bits from corners of brownies. So good they made a bag of them. Brownie brittle. Heathen. I, I only like the soft inside brownies. Remember those all edge pans they used to sell. I wish it was possible to make an no edges pan. You just have to maximize your ratio by using a pan as wide as your oven. So we need one of those spherical ice cube molds. But for brownies. Yeah. But if it's expanded in all three dimensions you'll definitely need to adjust the recipe for it to bake evenly. So the inside isn't just cold. That might actually be a good thing though. You'd have to increase the time and make up for it with decreased temperature. Which would reduce the crispiness of the edges. At this point I think we are on the verge of inventing a dedicated countertop appliance. Like a slow cooker but solely devoted to volleyball sized spheres of pure soft brownie. Carrot. Personally I actually like both middle and edge pieces. But the pro middle approach simply leads to way more brownie. Close bracket. Broccoli. IDK I just like the taste. Once I had broccoli made this way I never turned back. Grilled cheese duh. How did I need to scroll this far down to find this answer? When making a grilled cheese. I always use cheese that's slightly larger than the bread. So that the edges of the cheese melts directly on the pan. And then getting the bread to a perfect golden brown. Or slightly more, if you feel like it, is just perfection. Lol. 
I was thinking the same. Man. Guess I'm the only one who likes burnt cheese. Apostrophe. Sometimes I make grilled cheese. Like I put cheese in a pan. And then grill it. Cheddar with a touch of garlic salt is like a beautiful 9 feet wide cheese it. Tortillas. Although my family way over does it. Heating store bought tortillas directly over a gas stove top FTW. BBQ. Lasagna on the extreme edges only. Having that crispy edge is just how I always grew up on it, so my mouth expects it. Caramelized onions. Burnt ends are a thing for a reason. Shepherd's pie. If the potatoes on top are just slightly singed, it makes it so much tastier. Peppers. Scrolled way too far for this. Black and bell peppers. You know what's up. Fatty cut of steak. How do you char the fat without ruining the rest of the steak? You buy the correct cut of steak. While I won't say I would ever recommend it, if you were ever going to edge up to well done with a steak, a ribeye is the one to do it with. I would underscore go as far as to say that ribeye is not good rare. It needs at least medium. Otherwise the huge knot of fat and superior marbling it sports is gummy instead of properly cooked. As most other steaks lack this protective variety of fat. Even medium can be too much for them. I'd never order a medium New York strip. For instance. Ribeye is super forgiving. More so than any other cut. If you were to accidentally cook it a hair past medium. It still wouldn't be leather. Medium rare ribby is where it's at. Cooked perfectly medium rare. And it's literal butter. Fuck now I want a perfectly Mr. Ribby. Marshmallows oh my god. Sweet potato fries for me. Same. Sweet potato fries have to be a little crisp to be good. And salty. Maybe it's just because I'm used to eating soft, baked sweet potato. But I still like sweet potato fries when they're soft. I'll easily take them over regular fries if I expect to have leftovers because they are still good when reheated. In my opinion. I love a good soft baked sweet potato. I love sweet potato pie. Sweet potato casseroles. Sweet potato noki. Sweet potato cheese cake. I don't discriminate against the various forms of deliciousness sweet potatoes offer. Even non-crispy. I'll choose sweet potato fries before I get a fries. So even though you disagree, I upvoted your reply. Because potato love. But I'd prefer them just a bit crispy. Pepperoni. Get the big pepperoni slices from the deli. Bake the slices for like 15 minutes until crunchy. So good. Yes. I love old world style roni. Crunchy pepperoni dipped in marinara is one of my favorite snacks. I'll have to try with marinara. I can just eat em straight one after another. My roommate is vegetarian and thinks I'm completely insane. It's a taste treat. And the vegetarian is probably just jealous. Cheese. It's crunchier. I really want to try those toasty cheese its they put out. They seem completely up my alley. I just hope they actually taste toastier. The extra toasty cheese its are the best. I haven't bought a regular box since. Always extra toasty or hot and spicy. <laughs> toast. It seems to me that one seldom finds toast that is really toasted. Usually it is a flabby piece of warmed bread with a slight color to it. Left square bracket. Our electric toasters are extremely efficient. But people do not use them correctly. Bread is not toasted, when it take on color, it must have a change in texture as well. So don't be afraid of docker toast, and put it in a rack afterward, so that it crisps instead of sogs. Nothing is as revolting as the plate of toast one usually receives in a restaurant or a hotel. This comes buttered and wrapped in a napkin. And while it may have been crisp, when it came from the toaster, is has, in the meantime, steamed to a most unpleasant texture. On the other hand, English toast is often kept too long in a rack, so it becomes cold. Although crisp, I'm not sure which is the greater crime. Particularly when a perfect piece of toast made from good bread is one of the most delicious of foods, and one that any fool can make. James Beard. Beard on bread edited for typo. Yeah. And then they put a quarter stick glob of butter on each slice, to ruin the taste even more. Most meats and fish that are grilled on the skin. Bacon. Surprised I had to go this far down to find it. Chicken honestly. Onions. Especially if they're grilled over charcoal. 
Asparagus. This is what I was looking for. Asparagus on the BBQ is our favorite summer vegetable. Fries. I like it when they are crunchy. Shoestring potatoes are my favorite for this reason. Pretty much most carbs and meat. Pasta. I didn't say all. Paella. Pizza. I always find takeout pizza a little undercooked. Papa John's is the worst. Almost like the crust is doughy. Little Caesars is terrible too. A group of us at work ordered them for lunch a few times and would ask for it to be cooked longer to the point of saying almost burnt the pizzas. They always said they would but it always came out flopping about like wet cardboard and undercooked cheese. Corn beef hash. Burning is a necessity. H-A-M-B-U-R-G-E-R. -E Bonus if topped with cheese which is also a little burnt. Grilled cheese burnt cheese edges Alfredo pasta dishes and of course lasagna but everyone knows that. Cheese its They made a whole separate product cause it was so good. Objectively correct. And I love them. Potato chips I love the taste of the darker ones. I wish I could buy a bag of just the ones they throw out. Better made has non-kettle dark russets. So good. I bought off of Amazon. Thank you. I'll look it up.